Hello, welcome to 13th episode of Curiosity. And uh, this episode onwards, we are going to change a little bit the format. And instead of weekly science show, this is now going to be a monthly science show. So this is the October episode of the Curiosity, the 13th episode. And uh, we are going to cover what did I learn in September of 2020. So this episode features stories across discipline as usual. And uh, some of the stories that we are going to feature, this episode is going to be Crow Intelligence, Vikings, Genes, Fleas, Elephant Deaths, oxytocin, COVID-19, sleep and so on and as usual we are going to cover the news, observances and opportunities, news from the September and uh, what is expected in this month, October, uh, observances and opportunities for students and young scientists and researchers. So uh, stay tuned. Have you heard Raven? That is a very famous poem by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary while I pondered weak and weary over many quaint and curious volume of forgotten law, you know, the raven, the crow, uh, you know, this crow, there are a lot of proverbs about the crow that it's, uh, you know, it's a very intelligent bird, right? Here in India, there are so many sayings about the intelligence of the crow. By the way, murder is, what is the connection with the crow and murder? Are crows murderers? No. Uh, a group of crows is known as murder. Very interesting word, isn't it? Uh, a group of peacocks is known as ostentation. It's another very interesting word I learned recently. The latest research says that the crows know what they know. It is something like cogito ergo sum, the philosophical conundrum. That uh, I think, therefore I am, the really desperate is. You know, and the crows can ponder the content of their own minds, a manifestation of higher intelligence and analytical thought, long believed the sole province of humans and other uh, higher mammals. You know, so that's a very interesting, exciting piece of information that I learned last month. And uh, the study has been published in a peer reviewed journal. All these links are available in the show notes. Please have a look in the show notes. You can read the entire papers. And of course, large parrots and corvids, the family of the crow, uh, have the same or greater forebrain neuron uh, counts as monkeys with much larger brains. So it's not just the brain size matters, you know. So the brain size to the body ratio, the encephalization quotient is a better proxy uh, for measuring the intelligence rather than simple brain size, you know. Coming to the next story. There has been a decline in the quality of the democracy globally since 2006. Democratic backsliding typically occurs when populist executives gradually eviscerate institutional checks, political opposition, independent media and other forces of scrutiny and resistance in civil society. It's an alarming trend worldwide. You know, and the democratic countries, the spirit of democracy is in decline. And even human rights organizations like Amnesty International are forced to leave the country. That is really, really a threatening consequence of the democracy that is happening around the world. Uh, coming to the next story is the coronavirus. The vitamin D reduces the infection and impact of COVID-19. That is what the studies find. So it's very interesting that the, you know, the vitamin D deficiency is a very common, especially here in India, and especially among those people who actually work in front of the computer for a long time, sedentary lifestyle, they are not exposed to the sunlight, you know, and uh, that is one reason the why. And of course, vitamin D has been already known, uh, has an association with morbidity and mortality, you know, all cause mortality. So uh, vitamin D, if you improve your intake of vitamin D, uh, through fish and uh, exposure to the sunlight, especially during the noon time. So that will have a significant impact on, uh, you know, the the uh, in, uh, the COVID-19. If you get the COVID-19, uh, you know, so the severity of the COVID-19 disease will be much lesser. Uh, mind that it is nothing to do with immune boosters, right? That is a uh, uh, inter myth of the immune boosters have kept on <laughs> bursting through my channel. So uh, the vitamin D is nothing to do with boosting the immunity, but it has something to do with the, the severity of the COVID-19. So next story is about the Viking. Uh, so probably you know the aggressive, violent tribes of uh, Northern Europe, especially in Norway, right? So now the new study says that the Viking was a job description, not a matter of heredity. 
that is what the massive ancient DNA studying shows uh, published in the journal Science. Uh, it is something like our uh, caste system here in India, right? Much, much earlier, if you look, the caste is the Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, all these are basically a job description. It has nothing to do with your blood or heredity, but later on it has changed. The, you know, the caste system is now equated with the, the family where you were born. Uh, you cannot change your caste just by choosing a different occupation, you know. But the Viking, this is what the new DNA uh, study says. Another corner question that the study tried to find is that did Vikings start an early Russian state, you know, the origin of the, the state Russia. So is it really Vikings began the Russia? That is one of the very famous uh, theory, uh, the origin of uh, Russia. You know, if you are uh, keen on the Western uh, European or Eastern European, uh, you know, the history. So the Russian, the word Rus or Rus uh, is also uh, has origination from the Kyiv, a uh, Ukrainian capital. You know, the earliest Russian tribes were Kievan Rus people. And the Rus people itself is actually the Vikings. That is what the new theory says. So the Rus act means a rover in Finnish, the rover, uh, something to do with the shipbuilding of the Viking ancestry. So that's really interesting study. Next paper is uh, using weed during pregnancy is linked to the psychotic like behavior in children and the study is a very massive scale 11,489 children were included in the study and yes it's an alarming uh, you know the finding uh, especially if you're pregnant stop using weed that is what uh, the conclusion of this study. Next paper is a study conducted by Hiroshima University in Japan they found that using far UVC light uh, with a wavelength of 222 nanometer which is safer to use around humans effectively kills SARS-CoV-2 uh, the first research in the world to prove the efficacy against the virus that caused COVID-19 so it's one of the very good way to sanitize or sterilize the indoor space so remember indoor spaces are really dangerous these days because uh, the virus is thought to be uh, you know, uh, transmitted by aerosols, of course, and it's also the WHO itself is saying that it is an airborne disease. So, respiratory particle is a very major root of the transmission of the virus. So, to kill these virus particles, the air is really important. For that, 222 is a magic number. That is what this study says. By the way, this fast UVC light it doesn't penetrate human skin, even the cornea. It doesn't actually penetrate the human eye. So it's really safe for human beings. So it's a very good uh, study. <clears throat> and next story of the week is something to do with uh, dining out. Is it safe to dine out in a restaurant? So as I told you, indoor spaces are not good uh, because the, the droplets, uh, you know, these kind of spaces, crowded spaces are full of droplets and you might get it, especially for activities like eating or drinking where you cannot use your mask face mask and face shield so you have to remove it so is it really safe or not to go and eat in the restaurant the new study says that adults with positive SARS-CoV-2 test results were approximately twice as likely to have reported dining at a restaurant than were those negative SARS-CoV-2 test results so uh, adults going to the restaurant were twice more prone to develop SARS-CoV-2 that is what the study uh, from the US say so it is so uh, it might be same across the world as well especially here in India because the population density is very high and even the mask wearing prevalence is also very low so my suggestion is to avoid going to any restaurant or even film theater because if you go to the cinema theater it's now getting open up but uh, you know uh, if you of course uh, they sell the popcorn and the cock uh, you know the, the soft drinks and uh, that is just an alibi not wearing mask if you buy the the soft drinks or cock nobody is going to penalize you uh, not wearing mask so of course a lot of droplets will be there in the cinema theater so watching movie is uh, it's not a safe way at all this this time the next story of the month is uh, from the humanities unionized workplaces were 30 percentage more likely to face an inspection of the healthy or safety violation so inspection and the safety checking is very common in those workplaces where uh, you know the worker the employees have proper union so the likely reason is that the unions can help organize workers learn about the rights file complaints and provide greater protections against the legal retaliation by the employers very exciting piece of study. 
The next is a new study finds that the levels of oxytocin, the love hormone, are significantly lower in adults who were children when their parents divorced. So the divorce, uh, you know, the, the bad uh, repercussions of the, the divorce is what this study uh, emphasized. This might explain why children of divorce struggle to form their own relationship in adulthood. So, you know, the, the connection with oxytocin and divorce as young children. That's very interesting study. By the way, oxytocin, I also learned a very interesting technique called halving. Uh, have you heard of happening you can just google or search in the youtube uh, the happening is basically uh, self massage as you know hug is one of the very efficient way to increase oxytocin and also anxiety treatment right if you hug a person whom you love uh, you know for example your own parents or loved ones you know so that's the same thing with the massage also if you do this way so just massage your arms or you know your palms like this or your face like this or like this so this is something called happening technique that actually boosts your body to produce oxytocin that is scientifically proven method you know and especially if you do that with a soothing relaxing sound and also you can imagine that you are in a beach so this is actually a proven method to boost your oxytocin levels in the body the happening method uh, very exciting <laughs> and another story is something to do with this image uh, any guesses what it is? This is on a rock in the Arabian Peninsula. This rock is having a footprint. You know, it's basically a, a human footprint, friends. It's one of the earliest human footprint in the history of mankind in uh, Arabian Peninsula. It is uh, very, very old, more than 100,000 years old. Uh, footprint of the early human who ever walked in the Saudi Arabia. It is 120,000 year old uh, human footprints. That is what the scientific scientists discovered last week. Next story is to do with the Arctic. So, you know, Arctic is shifting to a new climate because of the global warming. Open water and rain rather than ice and snow are becoming typical of the region. That is what the new study found alarming. You know, we are losing Arctic because of the global warming. Next story is about the Antarctic, the polar opposite. Ice sheet is reaching a point of no return, the tipping point we are uh, expected to reach it. So the climate change, uh, uh, you know, scientists are really, really alarmed. And that's even if we reverse the temperature, the ice may not grow back. So, you know, the, the, it's a really disappointing piece of information coming from both the poles. Next story is about the internet searches. So artificial intelligence algorithms are getting more and more smarter. So the study says that gastrointestinal symptoms predicted the rise in COVID-19 cases weeks later. Researchers at the Massachusetts General Hospitals have found uh, demonstrating a novel early warning system for hotspots of the pandemic disease. So this is one of the early uh, symptoms of the COVID-19 that uh, you get the diarrhea and other GI symptoms. You know, and if people are Googling more and more on the diarrhea, then chances are high that those areas were such, uh, you know, the Google search or concentrated clusters uh, might be more prone for the COVID-19 infection. That is an exciting piece of the big data based AI, uh, you know, based study says. Next story is about the steroids. Steroids cut the death rates among the critically ill COVID-19 patients. That is what the major studies find. So it's very exciting. Uh, if you know somebody who is in the hospital, maybe you can talk to the doctor and uh, explore the possibility of the steroid administration. Here is a news published way back in June 18, 2020. COVID-19 drug. Sorry, Oxford. Tamil Nadu government doctors beat you to it because Tamil Nadu doctors have been administering this, uh, you know, this COVID, uh, this uh, steroid like uh, methyl prednisolone or dexamethasone uh, in the, uh, you know, in the serious case of the COVID-19 patients so way back, uh, especially the interventions of uh, Professor Gagandeep Khan from uh, CMC Vello is much appreciated on this suggestion to the TN doctors on, uh, you know, the steroid administration. So next story is something to do with this iconic blue jeans. You might wonder, this blue jeans, I mean, the blue jeans are very, very common around the world. is not one in, uh, you know, uh, three people around the world at any point of time wear the jeans. So these jeans, have you ever thought the sustainability of the jeans? Is it really a sustainable choice? 
what is the carbon footprint of these genes. If you actually search out and if you find out uh, the jeans sustainability jeans is one of the worst uh, dress you can ever wear if you are really a, a health uh, you know the the health of the planet earth matters to you uh, you know the environmentally conscious uh, lifestyle if you lead a uh, jeans is not your choice because you know jeans uh, when uh, during the manufacture of the jeans environmental impacts are really tremendous this is a picture from xintang in southern china uh, this is a, this is the denim capital of the world uh, you know uh, the, the 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 river is virtually blue in color because of the very different kinds of uh, toxic chemical dyes that is being uh, used for the production of the jeans the new study says that blue jeans are significant source of the microfiber pollution in the oceans and lakes too one pair of jeans can release over 50,000 microfibers per wash. Mind that these microfibers are not exactly the plastic microfiber because blue jeans is mostly cotton. Uh, you know, it's a cellulosic microfiber. Of course, it get degraded, but still the environmental impact is quite tremendous. And also the blue jeans are not purely cotton. It also makes lycra, uh, you know, to, to give the elastic ability and also the polyesters. A common time so of course the microfiber do include the plastic microfibers so new research highlights the sustained efforts from the food and drinks industry to oppose the public health measures aimed at tackling heart disease cancer and diabetes uh, NCD such as heart disease cancer and diabetes account for over 70 percentage of the global death and disability it's all about conflict of interest and propaganda of advertisement you know so if you look at that advertisement the people actually boost a lot of uh, amount into uh, propagating the lies, you know, and they actually do that. Even the, the peer-reviewed research is suffering from conflict of interest. Most of the time, these research that the sugar is not dangerous is supported by the sugar industry. So, you know, the conflict of interest and propaganda you have to be really cautious about, so as different cognitive biases. Next story of the week is something to do with the anxiety, uh, the stereotyping anxious and extroverted the study find that many people with social anxiety doesn't fit the shy stereotype so anxious people earlier thought to be really shy but latest study says that they are extroverted you know it's very exciting piece of information uh, next story of the month is a major study finds that the function of sleep brain building till the age number two and a half so till uh, age two and a half, that means the very uh, young infants, uh, you know, the, the function of the sleep is to build the neuron and synaptic connections in the, in the brain. And since two, two and a half years, uh, the, the function of sleep will shift to the brain maintenance and repair. So sleep essentially declutter the brain and taking out the trash that can lead to serious illness. So, um, uh, you know, peer-reviewed research more and more highlights the importance of sleep in our, uh, you know, the holistic life. So sleep is extremely important because it reboots our system. It cleans uh, the brain from the toxic accumulation of the toxic chemicals. So this is a very famous quote from Dalai Lama. Sleep is the best meditation. See, he said that meditation. So if you don't do any meditation, um, remember to sleep because sleep itself is a very good form of meditation. So next story of the week is something to do with the polar fleas. The fleas, uh, you know, of course, autumnal equinox is over in this northern hemisphere and we are now marching towards the winter. And uh, you will be interested to purchase the winter clocks and polar fleas is flooded in the market. And how sustainable is the, this consumer choice, this fleas uh, sweaters, you know, or wind cheaters? So the new study says that the synthetic fabrics such as polar fleas and nylon shed microplastic you know microscopic plastic fibers uh, when washed so synthetic clothing has released about 5.6 million tons of microfibers since 1950s polluting land and water alike the study is very alarming because uh, you know if you look at this microplastics or microfibers 
uh, in the environmental contamination it's far far outnumber that of the uh, shopping bags or straws or other plastic things that governments around the world is targeting single use plastics there so many governments have banned it right the straw plastic straw or uh, plastic shopping bag but if you look at the environmental impact of all these things then this single use plastic is far lesser than uh, impact through this microfibers you know so this uh, 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 microscopic uh, fibers are really a big uh, microplastic uh, big impact on tremendous impact on the environment so government should pay more attention to it and maybe taxation could be a good option uh, to prevent this synthetic fabric or, or you know to or to reuse at least rather than uh, leading a consumeristic lifestyle well next story is something to do with eyeglasses so the daily wears of the eyeglasses were maybe less likely to be infected with COVID-19. Uh, the proportion of the daily wears of the eyeglasses hospitalized with the coronavirus was lower than that of the lo you know, local population. That is 5.8 percentage versus 31.5 percentage. That's what the new find, uh, the study finds in China. So if you use the eyeglasses, then uh, wear it, especially when you are in the public places. Uh, you know, if you are not using the face shield, so uh, wearing the eyeglass or any kind of uh, eye protectant in addition to the face mask will significantly reduce your chance of uh, catching the COVID-19. That is a, a significant uh, finding. So this is a second uh, clue that we are getting. First clue that uh, in this episode we discussed about uh, vitamin D. You know, so uh, getting proper vitamin D is also a very important uh, predictor of the survival chance after getting the COVID-19, you know. Next story is about uh, following the stay-at-home orders in the California. Sparrows in the Bay Area produce higher quality songs compared with the previous years. Anthropogenic noise levels dropped to those of the mid-1950s spurring a rebound in the song quality which helps the birds defend territory and attract mates the song birds are really rebounding the song quality is really improving and you see that uh, noise levels have decreased to the uh, 1950s level so it's an amazing piece of information that the covid 19 lockdown now coming to the news of the last month so first is updates on the COVID-19 treatment and vaccines. So, you know, in the four candidates are right now at the phase three clinical trials and treatments. Uh, the, the addition is LLA's antibody against SARS-CoV-2. So it has now entered in the phase three clinical trials. So now we have two candidates at phase two clinical trial. The addition is Merck EIDD2801. That is what their compound is that targets a viral replication. Uh, this is a drug and now it has entered the phase two clinical trial. So there is update of, about the treatment. Now coming to the vaccine, it's the same thing from the last episode of the curiosity. We have three candidates at the phase three clinical trials and two candidates at phase two clinical trials. Coming to other news from the last month. So you might have heard this is a heart wrenching uh, you know story and the picture coming from Africa you know the elephants as you can see that elephants are massively dying in uh, African country called Botswana is a southern African country uh, near Namibia Zimbabwe and South Africa it's a landlocked country and Botswana by the way they're doing pretty good in uh, in the sub-saharan Africa there uh, you know the, the standard of living is one of the best per capita income is also one of the best so the Botswana, well, I haven't been to Botswana, but I flew over the Botswana uh, when I visited the, the South Africa, you know. So Botswana's mysterious elephant deaths were caused by cyanobacterial blooms uh, because the elephants are drinking water from, uh, you know, the lakes infested with these hazardous algal blooms. Arctic is turning green just like Antarctic due to the climate change. That is yet another alarming news. And this is a second story about Arctic in this uh, month's episode of the Curiosity. Air leak at ISS located at Russian side poses no major threat. So they actually they found an air leak in International Space Station. Chinese German measurements show that lunar surface has hazardous radiation level. So the future lunar mission has to be really careful now on the light of this new finding they really need to put more and more protective governments 
uh, because the, there is a huge uh, you know radiation risk on the surface of the lunar uh, uh, you know the, the moon surface NASA announced the next manned lunar mission uh, remember the first lunar mission was way back in, in 1969 so between 1969 and 1972 the Apollo missions the only the Americans did all this thing and only white uh, Americans ever landed on the moon till date so the NASA announced that the next lunar mission is now going to be in 2024 and they are planning to send the first woman uh, you know on the on the on the lunar surface so that's an exciting piece of information for all those who uh, who care about the gender equality so tuberculosis bacterium activates hiv virus to accelerate the aids uh, that's the finding from uh, indian institute of science uh, center for infectious diseases very exciting piece of study uh, excessive use of social media for COVID-19 health information is related to both depression and secondary trauma. That's another piece of information from the last month. CSAR announces uh, Shanti Suryu Patnagar Award. So uh, lots of award winners across various disciplines of sciences. JNC ASR, that is Jabala Nurse Center in Bangalore, as well as NCBSM in Bangalore, is grabbing a lot of uh, Bhatnagar Award this time. So, as the IITs, you know, IIT Kanpur and IIT Bombay has grabbed Bhatnagar Awards. Well, last month, NASA also released exciting pictures of Jupiter, uh, you know, the gas giant. So these, uh, as you can see, these are nothing but uh, the cyclones, right? So these are cyclones, persistent cyclones from the north pole of this gas planet and surrounded by many small cyclones that are constantly covering the surface. So the, the cyclones are actually in, rotating in different uh, direction, clockwise and anti-clockwise uh, on the north pole of this uh, gas giant. Uh, very interesting, very beautiful picture, isn't it? That is what the NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab and Caltech uh, Institute of uh, California Institute of Technology released this picture. Study find the ecological impacts of the hydroelectric power stations in lower Himalaya. So there are a lot of tremendous impact of this hydroelectric power. Of course, it's a renewable energy, but the impact is the habitat destruction. You know, uh, the forest cover it will be completely devastated uh, because of the hydroelectric power stations. Deforestation pushes elephants from the Chhattisgarh to Madhya Pradesh and increase the conflict. So the deforestation is driving the, the, the elephants out of their natural habitats and uh, you know the conflict with human being. Uh, you know that is basically happening in. Uh, uh, Chhattisgarh, that is what the new research says. Sundarbans is now classified as endangered ecosystem as per the latest IUCN categorization. So that's also a very bad piece of information for all those who cares the environment. Next story of the week is something to do with Java, the coffee. Caffeine in the coffee can help sustain attention over a long period of time according to new experimental research. So this research in RCT, that is randomized control trial, the gold standard in experimental research. And it says that drinking coffee really boosts, you know, your attention span. So earlier thought to be a conundrum or, you know, but now that the postulation, there is a scientific evidence to that proof. So next news is that snow meltdown in Himalayas accelerate nocticular algal blooms in Arabian Sea. What? Snow meltdown in Himalayas so far away price. How does that snow meltdown in Himalayas is connected with algal blooms in Arabian Sea? Because snow meltdown changes the heat wave patterns. You know, the surface temperatures of the ocean. Uh, the Arabian Ocean and that have impact on the, the algal blooms, you know, the nocticular scintillants, that is uh, dinoflagellate blooms are occurring uh, in the Arabian Sea uh, during the monsoon time. You might have seen the occurrence of this uh, luminescent, bioluminescent uh, algal blooms are very often uh, in these days in southern India, especially in Kerala and Goa and uh, Karnataka. Maharashtra cost. This picture is from uh, Malvin Shore of Sindhudurg district in Maharashtra. Uh, very beautiful picture, isn't it? But it's an alarming and this is basically a repercussion of the global warming trend. Well, coming to the observances of the next month uh, in October. The 1st October is International Day for Older Persons, uh, the Gerontology Day. The 2nd day, uh, October is a day for non-violence, especially religious violence. So we really have to follow the footsteps of the 
Gandhi uh, in the non-violence, uh, you know, the, the uh, strikes and protests. And fifth is World Teachers Day. It's an international day, not the Indian Teachers Day is something else. But here, this is World Teachers Day. 10th October is the World Mental Health Day as well as a World Migratory Bird Day. 13th October is Disaster Risk Reduction. Very important theme, Disaster Risk Reduction. Have you ever did, uh, you know, audit of your own life? How prepared are you to face a major disaster, for example, fire in your workplace and fire at your home? Think about it. 16th October is a World Food Day and 17th October is a day for eradication of poverty. 20th October is a World Statistics Day. 24th October is the UN Day, United Nations Day. So October 5th is a Teacher's Day, friends. So this year's theme is the teachers leading in crisis, reimagining the future, especially in the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Uh, you know, the, the teacher's contribution to society is really tremendous, uh, especially with the shift to the online education these days. And uh, mind that in the UN Sustainable Development Goal, that is SDG number four, is uh, to do with quality education. So teachers are the pillars of the fourth SDG uh, of the UN. And as you know, October 10th, uh, as I just said, is the World Migratory Bird Day. Uh, any guesses which migratory bird is this? This is called Arctic Tern. Friends, it's it's a miracle bird, I, I would say. It's my favorite bird, easily. The weight is only 113 grams, very lightweight. But you see, lightweight but a, a powerful machinery this bird is. It's, it can fly from Greenland to Antarctica and back every single year. That is a journey of 71,000 kilometers, uh, you know, and it can live up to 30 years. So total travel that this bird can achieve in its lifetime is 2.4 million kilometers. That is equivalent to three times trip to the moon and back. Can we ever imagine designing a drone, uh, you know, a solar uh, powered drone, like uh, Arctic Tern weighing just 113 gram that can fly this long, <laughs> you know, 30 years of life expectancy. Uh, impossible, downing trick, right? It's amazing, right? The, the natural selection is a very powerful, friends. Natural selection is a blind watchmaker, friends. Coming to astronomy related observances of the October. First October is a hunter's moon. By the way, this month, uh, October is now, we are going to have two full moons. Today, the October 1st is a full moon that is called Hunter's Moon and the final day of this month, the 30th October is another uh, full moon, the, the blue moon, right? 2nd October, our Gandhi Jayanti day tomorrow is going to be close approach of moon and Mars. So grab your telescope and go to your, uh, you know, the uh, terrace and watch the sky for the close approach of moon and Mars. Between 4th and 10th October is, we celebrate it as a world a space week, you know, astronomy week or space week. And the 5th of October is also known as World Astronomy Day. And it's also a peak of uh, Camelopardalid meteor shower. Well, October has so many kinds of meteor showers. You know, if you're really uh, fascinated to spot meteor in the sky, this is a month for you. So 7 and 8th of October is a peak of draconid meteor shower. And 10th October is a peak of Southern Taurid meter shower. 11th is a peak of Delta Origid uh, meter shower. See, so many meter showers in this month. 13th is Moon and Venus and Mars at opposition. So the three things are at opposition. So, uh, you know, the 13th October, you can spot all this uh, uh, Venus and Mars, right? 14th is uh, the launch. So use uh, MS-17. Uh, that is a mission by the Russia uh, to the ISS. You know, of course, they're, they're planning to replenish the ISS with a fresh batch of oxygen because, I, I, as I told you, there is a gas leak spotted in the Russian side of the ISS. 18th October is a peak of the Epsilon Geminid meteor shower, and 21 is a peak of the Orionic meteor shower. Friends, meteor shower. October is a month for you. 22 is a close approach of Moon, Saturn, and Jupiter. 
and 23 is a SpaceX Crew-1 launch to ISS, the American mission, and this is SpaceX. You know, SpaceX is basically the private enterprise. Uh, then you know you can actually pay the money to the SpaceX uh, they, they will take you to the space by the way SpaceX is a private uh, a mission uh, funded by Elon Musk the South African entrepreneur and uh, innovator uh, you know he's the CEO of the Tesla Motors as well so 24th October is the peak of the Leonis Minorid meteor shower and 29th is a close approach of the moon and Mars and 31st is a Uranus at opposition. The Uranus is the uh, icy planet and it's uh, 31st of October is going to be the best time to spot the Uranus. But unfortunately, the Uranus is going to be very close to the moon that day because the moon is also going to be the full moon, friends. It's going to be blue moon. Uh, you know, if you get two moons in the same month, uh, the second moon is usually called as blue moon. It doesn't mean that the moon is going to be the blue color. You know, that is basically, it's a misnomer. But yeah. It's, it's an opportunity. Uh, the next blue moon is now going to be in the spring of 2021, next year. So coming to opportunities uh, for, the, for the students and young researchers, KVPY scheme is still open. 5th of October is the deadline. A Ministry of Education nomination for Chula Brown Graduate Institute in Thailand uh, for the PG scholarship. The deadline is 15th October. So if you want to go to Thailand for studies, that Thailand is like India, you know, it's a developing country, but of course this institute seems to be a very good standard. So I mean, you can apply, why not? Uh, Ministry of Education is basically the new name for MHRD. You know, the name has recently been changed. Ramalinga Sami re-entry fellowship uh, is still open. The 31st October is the deadline. First SCO Young Scientist Conclave in Hyderabad, India. If you are less than 35 years, uh, I strongly suggest to apply. It's a virtual conference, but it's really prestigious, organized by the DST Government of India. Deadline is 2nd November. And uh, uh, SRFP 2021 for the students and teachers, 30th November is a deadline. That is Summer Research Fellowship Scheme of the three science academies in the country. The teachers can also apply if you really want to work with the academy fellow. And if you are looking for PhD positions in biology, then Ashoka has a call. And 28th October is a deadline, and they, of course, they have a, uh, they do a great work. Uh, you know, Ashoka is. Uh, one of the private universities that does excellent work in biological sciences especially and they and also they do have an interdisciplinary uh, approach to the research uh, you know and uh, yes they, they do have a of fellowship to support the PhD studentship and thanks for watching this month's episode of the curiosity episode 13 if you like this show please click thumbs up and subscribe to my channel in addition to curiosity I feature several short videos on uh, several topics like uh, sustainable living minimalism and scientific thinking see you soon in my next video goodbye <laughs>